Before it ruled the skies, it ruled the big screen. The F-14 Tomcat stole the spotlight in Top Gun, blazing through the clouds with jaw-dropping maneuvers. Off-screen, it was even deadlier, trusted by Navy pilots to win dogfights and survive the toughest missions. This is how it was built. The F-14 was born out of a need for versatility. The U.S. Navy needed a jet that could engage both air and surface targets, while also having the ability to adapt to various mission requirements. Its design was revolutionary. With wings that could adjust their angle in flight, the F-14 could maximize speed at high altitudes and lift at low speeds. The challenge was creating a wing mechanism that could withstand the extreme forces of battle while being simple enough for pilots to control at a moment's notice. The engineers were tasked with making the F-14 both powerful and lightweight. The body was made from a combination of high-strength alloys and durable composites. These materials needed to withstand the intense heat and pressure of supersonic speeds and combat conditions. Titanium was used for key structural parts because of its strength-to-weight ratio, but the rest of the aircraft relied on specialized aluminum alloys to maintain the necessary balance between toughness and weight. The fuselage was reinforced with a unique framework that supported not only the wing mechanism, but also housed the complex avionics and missile systems. Building an aircraft with these advanced systems required collaboration between engineers, manufacturers, and military experts to ensure it could serve its intended purpose. Perhaps the most striking feature of the F-14 is its variable sweep wing. These wings could sweep back at speeds over Mach 2, offering optimal aerodynamics for high-speed intercept missions. In contrast, when the wings were extended, they provided increased lift and control for slow-speed operations such as landing and dogfighting. Creating this wing system wasn't a straightforward task. The engineers needed to design a robust mechanism that could handle the immense forces acting on the wings during maneuvers. The sweep system used a combination of hydraulic actuators and an advanced mechanical linkage. Pilots could adjust the wing angle instantly, and the wings would lock in place during flight. Before we move on, here's a challenge for aviation buffs. What material was used in the F-14's wing pivot mechanism to handle the extreme stress of high-speed flight? Drop your guess in the comments, we'll reveal the answer at the end of the video. Powering the F-14 was a pair of Pratt & Whitney TF-30 engines, which gave the aircraft its speed and agility. These engines were capable of producing over 20,000 pounds of thrust each, allowing the F-14 to reach speeds of up to 2,485 kilometers per hour. To maintain this power, the engine intakes were designed to handle large volumes of air at high speeds, ensuring the engines ran smoothly even at extreme altitudes. The challenge of these engines, however, was their maintenance. Early models of the TF-30 had reliability issues which led to modifications in later versions of the F-14, especially with the introduction of the F-110 engines, which offered improved performance and reliability. The F-14 was more than just a fighter jet, it was an advanced weapons platform. Its avionics were cutting edge for the time, featuring radar systems that could detect and track enemy aircraft from over 200 miles away. The radar was linked to the aircraft's weapon systems, allowing the F-14 to engage targets with pinpoint accuracy. One of the most iconic features was its ability to launch Phoenix, Sparrow, and Sidewinder missiles. These weapons were designed to engage targets at varying ranges, making the F-14 a versatile threat in both long-range missile combat and close-quarters dogfights. Its advanced radar and targeting systems were linked to an autopilot system, giving pilots the ability to focus on the bigger picture while the aircraft's systems took care of specific targeting and tracking. After the design and production, the F-14 went through rigorous flight tests to ensure it met the Navy's high standards. Engineers had to test the variable sweep wing mechanism, ensuring it could deploy and retract smoothly under extreme conditions. The F-14 also went through high-speed tests to confirm it could achieve Mach 2 and above without sacrificing control. The early test flights uncovered a few issues with the engines, especially with the reliability of the TF-30. While the engines performed well at high speeds, their performance at lower speeds wasn't as consistent. This led to the decision to upgrade to the F-110 engines, which offered better low-speed handling. Once the F-14 was fully tested and the engine issues addressed, it entered full-scale production. The aircraft was built at Grumman's factory where assembly lines hummed with activity. 
Workers assembled the fuselage, wings, and avionics systems, while specialized teams installed the weapon systems and cockpit. Each F-14 was carefully crafted, with quality control teams conducting checks on every component. The final aircraft rolled out in the early 1970s and was immediately put into service with the U.S. Navy. With its variable sweep wings, powerful engines, and advanced radar, the F-14 quickly became a favorite among Navy pilots. It served as the backbone of the Navy's air superiority until its retirement in the 2000s, replaced by newer models like the F-A-18 Hornet. The F-14 didn't just become a symbol of military strength, it became a cultural icon. Its performance in the Gulf War and its prominent role in Top Gun made it a household name. The F-14's design influenced future fighter jets, including the F-22 Raptor and F-35 Lightning II. Its variable sweep wing technology, in particular, was a precursor to more modern innovations in aviation. Even after its retirement, the F-14's legacy lives on in the hearts of aviation enthusiasts and military historians. Its design, engineering, and combat performance continue to inspire jet fighters of today. The F-14 underwent multiple iterations during its service, with each model improving upon the previous. The most significant update came with the F-14D variant, which introduced advanced avionics and more powerful radar systems. These upgrades made the F-14 more capable in long-range missions and target acquisition. One of the standout features of the F-14D was its digital cockpit. This provided pilots with greater precision in handling complex operations and weapon targeting, offering an edge over newer adversaries. Moreover, the engine modifications in the F-14D, especially the transition to the F-110 engines, dramatically enhanced the aircraft's reliability and low-speed performance. In addition to performance upgrades, the F-14D featured better systems for communications and mission integration, ensuring pilots had real-time access to vital intelligence during combat. With a reduced maintenance burden and improved systems, the F-14D remained a formidable asset to the Navy well into the 2000s, despite the emergence of more advanced jets. While the F-14D saw great success, its increasing maintenance costs and the need for advanced multi-role capabilities led to its eventual replacement by the F-A-18 Hornet. However, the F-14's evolutionary design continues to influence modern fighter jets, especially in areas of avionics and aircraft flexibility. The F-14 Tomcat's cultural significance goes beyond its military history. It was cemented as a pop culture icon, thanks to its starring role in the 1986 film Top Gun. In the movie, Tom Cruise and Val Kilmer famously piloted the F-14 in high-stakes aerial combat. These scenes captured the agility and power of the aircraft, introducing the Tomcat to a new generation of aviation enthusiasts. The fast-paced dogfights showcase the variable sweep wing's unique ability to transition from high-speed interception to low-speed dogfighting, making the F-14 the perfect representation of cutting-edge military aviation in the 1980s. The F-14's role in real-world combat further solidified its reputation. During the Gulf War, the F-14 successfully performed a variety of missions, including air superiority, bombing runs, and long-range missile strikes. The aircraft's Phoenix missile system was particularly instrumental in these operations, offering unmatched range and precision for engaging hostile targets. The Tomcat's portrayal in Top Gun and its real-world combat success made it synonymous with American air superiority. Even after retirement, the F-14 continues to hold a special place in aviation culture, frequently appearing at air shows and in museums, ensuring that its legacy remains intact for future generations. The F-14 Tomcat wasn't just a fighter jet, it was a masterpiece of engineering. And as for our question, what material was used in the F-14's wing pivot mechanism? The answer is titanium. Chosen for its strength, heat resistance, and ability to survive the extreme stress of high-speed maneuvers. It was one of the many innovations that made the Tomcat a legend. Now here's one more question. Would you rather have flown the F-14 in Top Gun or faced off against it in battle? The F-22 Raptor can hit speeds no other fighter in America can match. 
but none of that would be possible without the engine buried deep inside it. It's called the F-119. Building this engine isn't simple. It takes heat, pressure, precision, and people who know exactly what they're doing. Before this engine ever takes to the sky, it begins in fire. Not the kind from the afterburner, but from the forge. It all starts with materials that aren't just strong. They're battle-tested. Titanium is chosen for the fan blades and compressor components. Lightweight, insanely strong, and corrosion-resistant. It's what lets the front of the engine spin faster than a rifle round without tearing itself apart. Nickel-based super-alloys handle the turbine's inferno, where temperatures soar beyond 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. These metals don't just survive the heat, they thrive in it, holding their shape under insane stress. Ceramic coatings are sprayed on like armor, forming thermal shields that deflect the inferno. And then there are the composites and high-strength steels, perfect for support housings, ducts, and fasteners, wherever weight must be cut, but strength can't be compromised. These materials arrive at Pratt & Whitney's Middletown, Connecticut plant as raw billets, forged blocks, and precision milled sheets. Each piece is inspected with microscopic precision, because even the tiniest flaw can mean catastrophic failure at 35,000 feet. If it's not perfect, it's out. What turns a chunk of metal into the core of a jet engine? Heat, pressure, and precision. After carefully selecting and inspecting the raw materials, it's time to forge them into individual components. First, massive billets of titanium and nickel alloys are loaded into industrial furnaces and heated to over 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit. This extreme heat softens the metals just enough for forging, allowing them to be shaped without cracking while still maintaining their internal strength. Next comes the pressure. Hydraulic forging presses slam the red-hot metal into specific forms with up to 50,000 tons of force. Titanium fan blades are forged with perfect curves to slice air at supersonic speeds. Compressor discs and shafts are shaped for spinning at over 10,000 RPM. Turbine discs, made from nickel superalloys, are built to handle searing combustion temperatures. Each part must have an aligned internal grain, just like wood, to resist tearing under stress. That's why they're forged, not cast. For critical parts like turbine blades, the process is even more extreme. Single crystal casting. Molten metal is poured into ceramic molds and slowly cooled to grow a blade from a single metal grain. No boundaries, no failure points. After forging, parts are vacuum cooled to prevent micro cracks. Inspect it again. Only the strongest survive. These aren't just components, they're future-proofed for hypersonic airflow, afterburner fire, and gravitational stress most machines can't dream of. Here's a quick question before we move on. Both the F-22 and F-35 are cutting-edge jets, so why do they use completely different engines? Drop your guesses in the comments below, we'll reveal the answer at the end of the video. These parts aren't finished yet. Forging gives them their core structure and shape. The fine details are what comes next. After forging, each part goes to 5-axis CNC machines. Robotic cutters that move in every direction, shaving metal with micron-level precision. For high-performance components like blisks, a blade and disc combo milled from a single piece of titanium, there's zero room for error. No welds, no bolts. Just pure, unbroken strength that can spin at 10,000 RPM without flinching. Turbine blades, built to survive 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit heat, need cooling channels drilled by industrial lasers. Some of these holes are smaller than a grain of salt, but absolutely critical. Without them, the metal melts. And when regular drills give up, EDM, electrical discharge machining, takes over. It doesn't cut with a blade, it cuts with controlled sparks, literally vaporizing metal with electricity one pulse at a time. Meanwhile, robotic arms switch tools mid-process, grinding, polishing, scanning, all without human hands. Each part is checked, adjusted, checked again. The tolerances is often within 50 microns. That's thinner than a human hair. These aren't just parts. They're sculpted metal masterpieces, built to handle insane speeds, pressure, and fire for thousands of hours without missing a beat. Now that all the major components, fan blades, compressor discs, shafts, and turbine blades are shaped and finished, it's time to finally unite into something greater than the sum of their parts. Assembly begins with sub-modules built at specialized stations. 
Technicians first mount the fan blades into a central hub, locking them into dovetail grooves with microscopic accuracy. These blades form the massive front fan that pulls in over a ton of air every second. Next, compressor discs are stacked along a central shaft, like building a metal spine. Each disc has tiny slots where dozens of stator vanes, which stay still, and rotor blades, which spin, are precisely inserted by hand or robotic arms. Everything has to line up perfectly or the air won't compress right. Even a tiny misalignment can throw the whole engine off balance. Then comes the combustor, a ring where fuel injectors are installed and airflow paths are sealed to contain controlled explosions. Behind it, turbine stages are slotted in. These blades are mounted onto discs, bolted and pinned using special fixtures to ensure they won't shift under thousands of degrees and intense rotational forces. The F-119 engine core is built around a central shaft, like a spine, torqued down with precision and laser aligned to avoid even the slightest vibration. This core includes the compressor, combustor, and turbines, all perfectly balanced around that spine. And up front, there's no fancy gearbox here, unlike geared turbofan engines. The F-119 is built for raw power and instant response. It's optimized for stealth and speed, letting the F-22 Raptor cruise faster than sound without using afterburners. That's super cruise. With the core modules built and aligned, the fan, compressor, combustor, and turbines, it's time to turn this mechanical marvel into a living engine. Now come the final touches. Technicians bolt on the outer casing, attach fuel lines, hydraulic systems, oil pumps, and the FADEC, the digital brain that controls everything. After final checks, the engine is hoisted into a special test cell, a soundproof, blast-proof room designed to handle 35,000 pounds of raw thrust. Everything is double-checked. Airflow paths, fuel pressure, oil levels, and control responses. Then ignition. The engine hums to life, low and steady at first. Then to full military power, vibration, pressure, heat, noise. Data pours in from hundreds of sensors. Engineers watch for any sign of imbalance, fuel irregularities, temperature spikes, because if anything's off, it fails. Failure here means teardown, inspection, maybe a full rebuild. Only if it passes every trial with surgical precision is it certified for flight. That's when it leaves the test stand and heads to the Lockheed Martin assembly line in Marietta, Georgia, where the F-22 Raptor is built. There, the F-119 is carefully lowered into the Raptor's twin-engine bay and locked in with surgical precision. Once installed, it's not just a machine anymore, it's the heart of a fifth-generation fighter. With testing complete and the engine now roaring to life inside a real Raptor, you'd think the story ends here. But to understand what makes the F-119 so different, we've got to rewind. But first, let's go back to where the F-119 really began. Back in the late 1980s, the US Air Force launched the Advanced Tactical Fighter Program, a contest to create the world's first true stealth air superiority jet. It couldn't just be fast. It had to fly high, avoid radar, and fight in any airspace, all without glowing afterburners giving it away. That meant building a whole new kind of engine, one that could supercruise, one that could hide from radar, one that could vector its thrust mid-flight. Pratt & Whitney stepped up, and the F-119 was the result. Not just powerful, but precise. Not just loud, but lean. The perfect match for the F-22 Raptor. And now you've seen the journey from raw metal to whisper-quiet stealth, from a titanium to the soul of a fifth-gen fighter. Remember the question. Both the F-22 and F-35 are cutting-edge jets, so why do they use completely different engines? It's because they were built for totally different missions. The F-22 needed stealth and speed, while the F-35 focused on sensors, range, and vertical takeoff. Two jets, two engines, two philosophies, Enjoyed this breakdown? Hit like. Which engine should we dive into next? Vote in the comments and subscribe for more.